Thank you. My time has expired, and I'll recognize the gentleman uh, from Texas for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sometimes definitions of words are, are pretty important, and I alluded to that in my opening statement about it, what independent might mean to others. For, for me, independent usually is a code word for secret, so we can't get the information. But um, you, one of your arguments for the independence of the Fed or the secrecy of the Fed is that those, Fed, those central banks that do have um, independence – and they're less monitored in public, they tend to have lower and more stable uh, rates of interest. But how, how can you, that, how can you um, uh, compare that to what, what we've noticed under the Federal Reserve? You know, I remember when I first started looking at what the Federal Reserve was doing, we had 21 percent. That sort of got my attention. And, and today we have interest rates of, of less than 1 percent. So that is hardly stable, and, and to me the real mischief comes not only because they're unstable and they fluctuate uh, radically, but also uh, the mischief it causes because these are artificial. I'm, I'm a believer that interest rates like prices should be set by the marketplace. And control of prices and wages is uh, the most serious abuse you can uh, put onto an economy, and yet uh, this fixing of, of prices seems to give us this trouble. And even uh, the Secretary of the Treasury now, uh, Mr. Geithner, you know, just a few months ago recognized that during the time he was in the Fed, the Fed kept the interest rates way too long, too low, too long. So, so how, how can you defend the Fed uh, maintaining uh, independence or secrecy in order to maintain uh, stable rates and to even try to achieve a stable economy, which obviously uh, nobody argues we have a stable economy? So I do not equate independence and secrecy. In fact, I agree with the underlying premise, I think, of your question, which is independence and secrecy in a democratic society are antithetical. And I think the Federal Reserve has been quite transparent and has become much more transparent under Chairman Bernanke about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I think we can retain our independence and your ability to trust what we're doing only by explaining to you what we're doing and why we're doing it. We have uh, not only the statements, which you mentioned your opening statement after every meeting explaining what we did and why we did it. We have minutes. You have hearings. There are monetary policy reports. There are other hearings that you hold. So I think there are many, many opportunities for us to explain why we're doing what we're doing. And, I, and those opportunities and that transparency is absolutely essential for retaining our independence. We okay, but, but I still think we can do better. Like I mentioned early on, there was a time when it, uh, the Fed did not reveal immediately what their targets were. That's right. Uh, why can't we consider uh, releasing the details instead of in five years? Why not in five weeks? What's, what's the big deal that you have to have this information? And the other argument you use, it's in the public's interest. And that one really baffles me. The, the public is served by you having more information that we don't have access to unless it's maybe five years. It seems like there's other interests. It, it, it allows this suspicion to build. Whose interests are you really protecting? Because you say it's the public's interest, I don't think reassures a lot of people because all of a sudden we think, well, what are you doing? Are you protecting the bankers' interests? Uh, are you protecting some international, another government, another central bank, or, or what? I, so I don't see how you can protect the public's interests. It seems like we in the Congress should have the responsibility for protecting the public interest by knowing more about what you're doing. Within three weeks, uh, Congressman, we release minutes of our meeting which give detailed explanations of why we did what we did, including the arguments back and forth, the uh, minority opinions, if people disagree. It, it, I think releasing, I think you're talking about transcripts, yeah, it, which it, release it, it, after five years. I would be very concerned that releasing those transcripts earlier would inhibit debate. I think it's in the public interest that we have an unfettered debate 
within the Open Market Committee that we are able to speculate among ourselves, what if we did this, what if we did that, where are things going, that there be no inhibition on, our, on the back and forth within the Open Market Committee. Frankly, I've been at the Federal Reserve for several decades now, and uh, in my view, publishing the transcripts themselves have had a somewhat inhibiting effect on the way the debate is carried out. There are many more prepared statements read at open market committee meetings now than was before the transcripts were published. I would be very hesitant. People would be very worried if their remarks were going to be made public very, very quickly. They'd be very worried about what they would say, and they would be much more careful about what they're saying, and that is not in the public interest, provided we're willing to explain to you, as we are, why we did what we did and what the minority views are, and we do do that. Of, of course, you know, without an audit, we never know. It just seems that it would be the benefit to us to know what the detailed discussion, why, why, is there, uh, why, why is there any value? I just don't uh, quite a agree with that uh, because it's really the discussion that we have. But we're not, like I made my point in the opening statement, this is after the fact. This is after you've had your meeting. It's after you've done something. Uh, and also, the more information the market gets, the better the market operates. And uh, if they know what you're thinking about and what you're planning, uh, you know, five, five years for the minutes is, is really uh, way too long. The gentleman's time has expired, but the witness. Well,